Welcome back. In the last lecture, we talked about two methods for sharing continuous items. These were items that you can cut up. We talked about food and we talked about land. The two methods we talked about, one was called the divider chooser method, which was for two people. And we also talked about the loan divider method, which was for three or more people. Today, we're going to talk about the steel bits method. This method um, works for any type of item, even discrete items, so even items that you can't cut up. It also works for continuous items, and this method works for any number of people. Here's the description of, of the method. I'm not gonna go through it word for word, but I, I do wanna talk about the first step. The first step in a sealed bids method is for each person involved to bid on the items. So they have to decide how much each item is worth to them. So let me give you an example of what this would look like. So my sister and I um, were given a PlayStation 5 and a diamond ring. Because this is fake. I don't have a PlayStation 5. But pretend that we were given a PlayStation 5 and a diamond ring. So now we have to bid on the items. So we have to bid on the items and decide how much each item is worth to us. And this is done in secret, right? So that's why it's called sealed bids. So I don't get to see what, what she values each item and she doesn't get to see how I value each item. So let me just give you an idea of how I would think about this uh, if I were... Um, bidding on these items PlayStation 5 So I know the PlayStation 5 um, Costs $500 it's sold for $500 But I also know that it's hard to get right now. It's sold out everywhere But I really want a PlayStation 5. So maybe the PlayStation 5 is worth to me more than 500 say 700 because I really want it Now, it's important to note that this is not how much I would be willing to pay for a PlayStation 5 because I'm not going to pay $700 for a PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 is given to us, right? It's already given to us. We just have to figure out how to share it. So we're not, I'm not paying five, $700 for a PlayStation 5, right? This is just how much I would value it. A diamond ring. I don't really want a diamond ring. Um, I wouldn't wear it. Like if I had it, I would probably sell it. So I know that maybe I can sell it for $1,000. But I'm also don't want to spend the time to figure out who to sell it to and to post it online or to go to like a dealer to, to sell it. So maybe it's, it's worth a little bit less than a thousand for me. So say it's worth nine hundred dollars to me. OK, those are my bids. Now, my sister will have bids also. Um, I don't get to see them and she doesn't get to see my bids. Now, what happens next is whoever values the item more is going to get the item. So say. I valued the PlayStation 5 more, so I'll get the PlayStation 5. But my sister deserves half of that PlayStation 5, so I'm going to have to pay her some cash um, for me keeping the PlayStation 5. The diamond ring, I don't actually want the diamond ring, so I'm hoping that actually she values it more and she gets the diamond ring. But I deserve half of that diamond ring also, so if she gets the diamond ring, she's going to pay me some cash in return. Now, how much cash we pay? That's, that's a different story. That's a little bit more complicated. So let me go through that in an actual example. All right, example one. So Bart and Lisa here are sharing silver ring, gold necklace, autographed jersey, and a PlayStation 5. And Bart and Lisa have already bid it on items. These are Bart's values, and these are Lisa's values. So let's go through the seal bids process for uh, Bart and Lisa. The first step is to figure out each person's fair share. So for each person, we're going to total up the value of the items. So for Bart, 102 plus 240 plus 122 plus 656. Okay, so in Bart's eyes, all of the items total uh, 1,120. Okay, so that's all the items together in Bart's eyes. And we're going to divide this by... We're sharing this between two people. So Bart and Lisa, two people, we're gonna divide it by two. 1120 divided by two is 560. Okay, so what this means is that in Bart's eyes, all of the items together are worth 1,120, right? He deserves half of that, so we divide it by two. So in his eyes, he deserves $560 worth of items. And then we're going to do the same thing for Lisa. So Lisa, in her eyes, the items together are um, worth $122 plus 
plus 68 plus 282. 668. Okay, all the items together are worth 668 to Lisa, and then we're also going to divide by 2 because there's two people. So 668 divided by 2 is 334. Right, so in Lisa's eyes, everything together is worth 668, and she deserves $334 worth of items. Okay, next step is to actually give out the items. Okay, so for each item, whoever bids more is going to get the item. So first is the ring, 102 versus 122. So Lisa is going to get the ring. And I'm going to keep track of what each item is worth to each person who gets it. So the ring uh, Lisa got, and the ring is worth 122 to Lisa. Next up is the necklace, 240 versus 196. Bart's going to get it. So Bart's going to get the necklace, which is worth 240 to him. Next is the jersey, 122 versus 68. Bart's going to get it. And the jersey is worth 122 to Bart. And then finally, the PlayStation 5, 656 versus 282. Bart's going to get that one also. And it's worth 656 to him. Okay, so we, get, we gave out the items. And now we want to total the value of all the items that each person got to them. So for Bart, Bart got the necklace, the jersey, and the PS5. So that's 240 plus 122 plus 656. 1018. Okay, Lisa only got the ring, so she only got $122 worth of items. All right, so obviously, if we stop here, it's not fair, right? Because Bart in his eyes, deserves $560 worth of stuff. But even he would admit that he got a whole bunch of more stuff, right? He got $1,018 worth of stuff. Okay, so it's not fair right now. Lisa deserves $334 in her eyes, and she only got $122 worth of stuff. So it's not fair for her right now. The next step is an adjustment. So Bart deserves $560. He got... $1,018 worth of stuff. So he got too much, right? So we're actually going to take some money away from Bart. So I'm going to denote that with a minus here. Okay. So he deserves 560. He got $1,018 worth of stuff. So he got too much. So we're going to take away some cash from him. So he's going to give us some cash. So that's going to be a minus to Bart. Now, how much? How much cash are we going to take from Bart? So the way you find out is you're going to subtract. So 560 minus 1018 okay so do it in that order uh the 560 the fair share minus 1018 and i do expect a negative number right because smaller number minus a bigger number should be a negative number and it's negative 458 so that means we're going to take 458 dollars from bart so he's going to give us 458 dollars because he got too much items. He's going to give us $458, and we're going to take that and put it into what is called a holding pile. Right? We're going to take away $458 from Bart, and we're going to put it into the holding pile. So in the holding pile, it's going to appear as a positive $458. And what that means is that we're putting into the holding pile. So I'll write put in. Put into. So a hint here is that whatever sign you have here in the holding pile is going to be the opposite sign. All right, so we're taking $458 away from BART and putting it into the holding pile. So it's going to appear as a plus. Same thing for Lisa. Okay, So Lisa deserves $334. She only got $122 worth of items. So we need to actually give her some money. right? So she got too little. So we want to give her some money. So this should appear as a plus 
because we want to give Lisa some some money. How much money? Subtract. So same same order, the fair share three thirty four minus the items one twenty two. Okay, bigger number minus smaller number. So I do expect a positive there. So that's going to be a positive two twelve. So we're going to give Lisa $212, but from where? So we're going to take it out of the holding pile. So in the holding pile, we're going to take out 212. It's going to appear as a negative. So once again, here it's positive. In the holding pile, it's a, it's opposite sign, right? It's negative. But the meaning of it is we're taking out. So we're taking 212 out of the holding pile and then giving it to Lisa. So one way to check is just make sure that um, you have opposite signs. Okay, so now we're going to figure out where everyone is at. So I'm going to take the items that Bart got, which is 1018, and then we're going to subtract 458. So 1018, which is how much um, total value of the items he got, and then he paid 458, so subtract 458. So right now he's at 560. Okay, if you do it right, the number you get here should be exactly the fair share number. So we did it right. Same thing here, 122 plus 212. So 122 is the items that Lisa got, and then we gave her some money, and that should get her up to 334. Okay, if we did it right, this number should match the fair share. So we're good. So right now, everybody should be happy. So Bart got $1,018 worth of items. He paid $458, which brings him down to $560, which is exactly what he thinks he deserves. Right, he's happy. Lisa, she got $122 worth of stuff. We gave her some money, and then she ends up being at $334, which is is exactly what she thinks she deserves so she's happy and then most of the time if you now check the holding pile there's actually extra money left over right so the holding pile we put into 458 and then we took out 212 which means there's extra money left so 458 minus 212 so plus 458 minus 212 And there's 246 left over. So let me say this is uh, the leftover. What do we do with this leftover money? We're going to divide it evenly among Bart and Lisa. So we're going to take the 246 and divide it by 2. 246 divided by 2 is 123. So each person is going to get an extra $123 from the holding pile. So we're going to add on 123 for each person, which would get us to a final answer. So 560 plus 123. is 683 for Bart and then uh, Lisa 334 plus 123 is 457 so items plus the cash uh, in Lisa's eyes she got $457 worth of things so she's really happy bart his items plus the cash that he, he got he in his eyes he got 683 dollars worth of items so he's really happy also so everybody's happy and let, let me also make a note here that lisa is not going to look over at bart and, and be jealous right because remember they don't know how each person values each item so all she knows is that they both got 123 dollars in cash so they both got the same amount of cash. She doesn't know what Bart thinks of all the items. So she actually doesn't know this number that 
in Bart's eyes. So she can't get jealous of Bart. She, all she knows is that she got 457. In her eyes, she deserved 334. So all she knows is that she's really happy. Let's now try an example with three people. So here we have Kai, Luna, Brian, who are sharing diamond ring, pearl earrings, baseball card collection, comic book collection, and a stamp collection. Same as before, first step is to figure out each person's fair share. So this is how much each person thinks they deserve. So for Kai, we'll add up all the items. So 2,000 plus 2,100 plus 700 plus 1,296 plus 4,200. In Kai's eyes, all of the items together are worth 10,296. And then we're going to divide this by how many people there are. So there's Kai, Luna, Brian, so there's three people. In the last example, we divided by two because there was only two people. So divide by three, so one, zero, two, nine, six, divided by three. Three, four, three, two. So in Kai's eyes, he deserves $3,432 worth of stuff. Luna, same thing. Add up all the items. 502 plus 2500 plus 1250 plus 4000 plus 3100. Total is 11,352. And then we're going to divide it by three because there are three people. One, one, three, five, two, divided by three. Three, seven, eight, four, 3,784. Same thing for Brian. One, two, five, zero plus 3,702 plus 704 plus 5,000. Plus one five oh nine. Twelve thousand one sixty five total. And then divide that by three. Four thousand and fifty five. So four zero five five. All right, that's each person's fair share. That's how much each person thinks they deserve. Next up, I'm going to give out the items. So for each item, whoever bid the most uh, is going to get the item. The ring, 2502-1250. So Kai is going to get the item. So what's important here is actually the value of the item. Um, so I'm going to be lazy here and just write down the value of the item. But you should understand that Kai got, actually got the ring, which is worth 2000 to Kai. Next up is the earrings. 2100, 2500, 3702. So 3702 is the biggest. So Brian's going to get the earrings, which is worth 3702 to him. Baseball card collection, 700, 1250, 704. So Luna, 1250 is going to get the baseball card collection, which is worth 1250 to her. Comic books, 1296, 4000, 5000. So Brian. At five thousand, he's gonna get the comic book comic book collection, which is worth five thousand to him, and then stamp collection four two zero zero three one zero zero one five oh nine. So four two zero zero is gonna get it. Okay, so that's given out all the items, and then we want to total the value of, of all the items for each person. Two thousand plus four thousand two hundred. So Kai got $6,200 worth of items. Luna just got the $1,250. Brian, 3702 plus 5000 8702 Okay, next is the adjustments. So Kai deserves 3,432. He got 6,200 worth of items, so he got too much. 
So we're going to take away some cash from Kai and put it into the holding pile. So I do expect a negative here because we're going to take away cash from Kai. Um, if you don't want to think like, think like that, you can just subtract, right? So take the fair share number, subtract the items. So 3432 minus 6,200. Okay, I do get it negative as I expected. So negative 2768. So we're taking away $2,768 in cash from, from Kai and then put it into the holding pile. So in the holding pile, it's going to be a plus 2768. Okay, so the, the signs should be opposite. And let me make a note here that this means we're putting into the holding pile. Or pay into. So Kai is going to pay $2,768 into the holding pile. Next up is Luna, uh, subtract 3784 minus 1250. Okay, so I got a positive answer here. So this is a plus 2534. I did expect a positive because she deserves 3784. She only got 1250, so we need to add some cash for her. So plus 2534. So we're going to give her some cash, but we're going to take it out of the holding pile. So in the holding pile, it's going to appear as a negative. Right, because we're taking out uh, 2,534. So take out. And then finally, um, Brian, 4055 minus 8702. I got a negative answer here, so negative 4647. I did expect a negative because he only deserves 4055. He got a whole bunch more. He got 8702, so he got too much. We're going to take away cash from Brian and put it into the holding pile. So I did expect a negative there. Um, so this is a take away from Brian and put it into the holding pile. So this should be a plus 4647 because we're putting into the holding pile for, for Brian, or Brian's going to pay into the holding pile. All right, so once again, uh, as a tip, the signs should be opposite. Okay, now we're going to figure out where everyone is at. So take the items and then subtract 2768. So 6200. Minus 2768-3432. If you did it correctly, the number you get here should match the fair share number. So we're good here. Uh, what that means is that he got $6,200 worth of items, and he's going to pay 2768 into the holding pile. And then now he's at 3432 overall. For Luna, it's going to be 1250 plus 2534. And she's at 3784. Okay, I did expect this to equal the, the fair share number, so we're good there. And then for Brian, 8702 minus 4647. 4055. It does match the fair share number, so we're good there. Okay, so everybody is at their fair share number, so everyone's happy so far. And then most of the time, actually, in, in for the questions that you're, you're gonna see in this class all the time, there should be money left over. Okay, so we're gonna do plus 2768 minus 2534 plus 4647. And we're at 4881. Okay, this is the money left over. And if, if you have money left over, you're going to divide it evenly among the people and then give them the extra cash. So we're going to take the 4881 
divided by by what? Is it two or three? It's three. All right, we're talking about three people, so we're going to divide it by three. Four eight eight one. is uh, divided by three is one, six, two, seven. And that's how much each person is gonna get at the end, in addition to, to their items. Okay, take the number that they're at right now, so three, four, three, two, plus that one six two seven. So Kai is at five zero five nine. Five eight one. And that's five zero five nine. Luna three seven eight four. Plus one six two seven. Luna is at five four one one. Ryan 4055 plus 1627. Brian's at 5682. Okay, each person got more than what they think they deserve. So each person is actually happy. All right, 5411. Luna deserves 3784. Brian got 5682 and he deserves 4055. Everybody's happy. Technically, with the still bids method, you're not supposed to know how the other people bid. But the reality is, say with the example with, with me and my sister, we know each other. So I have an idea that she probably wants a diamond ring and she probably has an idea that I want the PlayStation 5. So I can maybe guess what her values are and she could probably guess what my values are. So the situation here is, if you were able to see everyone else's bid, or if you were able to guess everyone else's bids, what strategy would you use to, to get what you want? So the situation here is we have Mario, Luigi, Yoshi. These are their, their bids. And Peach is able to figure out what everyone's values are. So example here, right? Peach wants to get the one up mushroom. She wants to get the green shell. And at the same time, she wants to earn as much money as possible. So if she knows everyone else's bids, how should she bid to get the one up mushroom, to get the green shell, and also to end up ahead, right? To get as much money as possible. So let's start with the items that she wants. The one up mushroom and a green shell. So let's start off with the one up mushroom. If she wants to get the item, she needs to be the highest bidder, right? So. Currently, the bids are 5,100, 4,200, and 3,250. So she needs to be the highest bidder. How high should she go? Should she go 10,000? Or should she only be slightly above uh, the 5,100? Well, remember that in the seal bids method, if you are the highest bidder, you're going to get the item, right? But you don't want to bid too high. If you bid too high, right, the, the number here is going to be big, which means your items here is going to be big, which means you're going to have to pay a lot into the holding pile, right, which you don't want to do. So your best strategy is to be the highest bidder, but just to be slightly above the highest bidder, right? Only slightly. So current highest bid is 5,100. So I only want to be slightly above that. And, uh, Yes, you can go like one cent above, but let's let's agree to make things simple and just work with whole numbers. So if I want the item, I'm gonna look at the highest bid and go one dollar above. Okay, so Peach wants the one up mushroom. Highest bid currently is five thousand one hundred. She's gonna go one above that, which is five thousand one hundred and one. She also wants a green shell. So same thing. Look at the highest bid. Current highest bid is 1,500. Okay, she wants it, but she only wants to be the highest bidder barely, so she wants to go $1 above it. So $1 above 1,500 is 1,501. Now, what about the other items? So the other items, she doesn't want, right? She doesn't want, so she doesn't want to be the highest bidder there. But at the same time, she wants her value to be as big as possible, right? Because 
by making it as big as possible, she's going to get more cash back from the holding pile. Okay? So, looking at the, the power star here, she doesn't want it. So, she doesn't want to be the highest bidder. So, if I look at the highest bidder right now, it's 5899. Right? She doesn't want to beat that. But she also wants her value to be as big as possible. So, the strategy here is look at the highest bid and go one below. Okay, so highest bid currently is 5899. Go one below that. So one below that would be 5899. 5, so one below would be 5898. In this situation, Yoshi is going to get the item, right? But Peach's value is still high, so she did, she's going to get more cash back because of that. For the win cap, highest bid currently is. 3,500, right? She doesn't want it, so she's gonna go one below. So one below 5,500 will be 5,499. Sorry, 3,499. So that's gonna allow Luigi to win and get the item, but he's gonna have to pay some cash into the holding pile, and she's gonna get some money back. So by making that as big as possible without winning, she's gonna get the most money out of the holding pile. All right, so that's the sealed bids uh, method. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.